Hey guys, it's Jack J again. Today I'll show you guys more about the game Skyrim, the Elder Scrolls Skyrim. Um, the video will be split into two or maybe even three parts. I'll cover the following topics in the the video. I'll do a walkthrough through the cities and some of the houses I've bought. Combat, magic, shouts, and even some missions or tasks. As always, the settings I'm going to use. Um, MSI Afterburner is not running in this video. It doesn't detect Skyrim for some odd reason, I don't know why. So I only have fraps to show the indication of the frames per second. So sorry if, that, if that's an inconvenience for some guys. Now this is my house in um, Solitude. Solitude is probably the biggest city in the game, so that's why I've chosen the city to show you guys. In the beginning of the game, um, you were told that the High King was murdered, while the High King was located in the city, in the Blue Palace. His wife, or the Queen, the High Queen, is still located in the city. You can do missions for her. She's the Yarl of Solitude. Um, it's almost the same as Oblivion where you can buy a house and then there's almost no furniture or decorations and then you can go to the steward where you brought the house from and you can buy furniture or decorations they say for the kitchen or cellar or bedroom and so forth now in order to buy a house you have to do missions for the steward and then for the owl and then see or he will appoint you as a thane and then you can buy a house from the steward And as always you can you have your chest where you can store unlimited items. And also what's nice about this game is you have your companions like in Fallout. They can also carry items for you but just as in Fallout they have a limit of how much they can carry. You can also only have one companion active at a time. And the companions also differ, some prefer magic, some prefer weapons swords and maybe other prefer archery. So exciting when new folk come into town. I bet we've had plenty of adventures. One thing that's almost immediately noticeable when you're playing the game is that the environment has been upgraded. So the snowy or ice areas you can see from far like now there's like a snow snow effect blowing over it as if there's a snowstorm and if you get close or in that area you'll see there's a snowstorm so and also you get your type of swamp environments, your open world environments and as I just told you guys your ice environments so I'll quickly go to another town show you the difference from Solitude. Now Windhelm Wind is the city where Ulfric Stormcloak is located. He's the leader of the Stormcloaks. Uh, in the game you can either join the Imperials or the Stormcloaks. Um, I'm not sure who's led by the Imperials though. And now the Stormcloaks, they want to fight for the independence, mainly for the Nords of Skyrim but also the other races like Britons and so forth. So as you guys probably guessed I've Join Ulfric, so I'm a storm cloak. So you can see this is a much more snow oriented city. What do you want, no drinker?
So just like in Oblivion, where you have your, where you had your um, fighter skills and your major skills and so forth. This game, there is not a fighter skill or a major skill, but there is um, the companions, which is basically it replaces the fighter skill, but it's only located in White Run. Um, and your major skill is located um, at the College of Winterhold. So I'll quickly show you guys some combat. Most of the time um, in caves, you either fight spiders or draugus. Now, draugus is basically a, a form of zombies, but they're just much faster and stronger than normal zombies. I'll quickly show you guys some magic. So, it's broken down into the following groups you have your alteration. Illusion, destruction, conjuration, restoration, your shouts, which I will be showing a bit later, powers, which I also show later, and active effects just show you spells or weapons that you have on you that has active effects, let's say they increase your health and so forth. Um, so I'll mainly just show you destruction with conjuration, it's actually. Oblivion was way ahead, um, there you could summon spiders and zombies and almost anything in this game you can only summon Fleming Familiar, um, a zombie, you can reanimate the dead corpse and also a flame uh, astronaut or a frost astronaut so you can't even summon a Deidre, uh, no in Oblivion you could so basically you probably, guys probably know you can use a spell either in one hand or you can use it in two hands. Now in two hands, it's much more powerful, but you should have the skill unlocked that it should be more powerful. I'll show you guys now what I mean about that. So let's say for your skill for destruction, um, dual casting. Um, if you had, haven't selected dual casting, um, it won't be that much more powerful than a single handed destruction spell so I'll show you my strongest um, destruction spell I have is Wall of Storms it's basically an electric it creates an electric area that sticks to the ground or a person for a couple of seconds um, but it drains my mana fairly quickly So as you guys can see, you have either you have your one-handed weapons or you have your two-handed weapons. Now I prefer one-handed weapons because you can use a shield or magic spell on the other hand. Um, so if let's say you have two-handed weapon, if you get damaged to the point where you can almost die, you either have to switch to one-handed weapon and heal yourself, or you should use a potion. And I don't want to carry around 400 potions every time. So I prefer using mana as weapons. So I'll quickly show you guys the shout. Now shouts are basically they like magic spells except um, they have words of power that dragons can use. Now each shout consists of three 